thing is, is technology is all around us. We need to start incorporating it. We can't get away from it. So in this way, I took my two chemistry, took my chemistry classes, and with the stem, stem money, we got some uh, new technology to use for our chemistry classes. What you see here is called a pH Pro with a digital display and a battery. So instead of, if, have you all ever worked with acids and bases before? Okay. You use a little tiny piece of paper? Yeah. Okay. This eliminates that because one problem that you have when you're using the pH paper is leftover acid or residue which could cause serious problems. So to eliminate that we're using the technology. They take it, which we'll see some more pictures here in a minute, uh, that it, uh, sorry, went blank. There we go. Okay. We use this for an antacid lab. Ever get a little bellyache, heartburn or something and your mom gives you a little tongue or something? Well, my students took this technology to a new level. We looked at, investigated, what is the best and acid out there on the market for your money? What's the most effective? What's the most cost efficient? So they used these probes, all this uh, digital stuff that we had in order to test this. They test the pH before, the stomach acid before the antacids, with the antacids and afterwards, because we want to get it to a neutral solution. So we're going to use this technology. There we go. The use of the technology allows it easier to collect the data. As we said with the pH paper, if it's laying on the table like right here, it could cause an issue. If there is some acid on it, you could get burned, you could get hurt. During this actual project, I actually had a student get severely burned with acid because someone used the paper and left it laying. Did not, not, did not tell their partner it was there. So, if using if they were using the probes, would they have got burned? No. So the technology is used. The probe, probe provides a safer testing environment. The pH paper left out causes this problem. And it gives you a better accuracy reading with this technology. It's, very, it's more helpful when you're doing scientific experiments. You get better data, better results. <coughs> Technology provides an advanced learning experience for our students. Okay. Uh, I'm from the old school days when we used paper all the time. Paper, 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 paper. In a lot of your classes you may still do, some you may not. If we use everything technology, everything digital, everything online, you don't use any more paper. If you're an environmentalist, eco-friendly, it saves the trees, saves the environments. Social networking. When all kids got. I don't do it, but they do. Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, MySpace, I don't know, what all, whatever these things are. I, I do good check my email once a week. But using this technology it benefits us. As the gentleman before, okay, we could actually have classes at our schools using uh, the Mondo boards digitally. Sign language in other schools. Technology is a great tool, but there still needs to be hand-on activities. Using the technology, you can get virtual labs to do, but it does not replace the actual hands-on activity in labs. Okay. We've got a lot of kids here today. Would you rather do a lab on a computer, or would you rather do it with your hands? hands. With your hands. Okay. If you had the chance to dissect a frog, would you like to do that? Yes. 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 Okay. What if you have, could only do it on the computer? No, I should, no, I would, no. Right. Technology is wonderful, but you've got to have the real hands-on stuff. You've got to have a balance between both. In the future, my chemistry classes is going to be technology-based. I'll give you a brief description. I'm going, to, I'm going to do a test run, put all my labs online. The kids are responsible to get the labs, do the labs, post them online, but they do them in class. They're responsible to get all the materials together to make sure everything is done correctly. They have to do the research before they can do anything. We're going to take give it a test run. But right here, actually testing, this is stomach acid. Not real stomach acid. They get it from the body, so don't worry. But they're testing, uh, if you, I don't know if you can see or not, it's orange. They were testing tums on this stomach acid. And on, in the next, on the next couple slides, I'm going to show the data that my students found for this information. And some of it was amazing to them how much 
what a, okay, like an alpha seltzer. You got six grams for an alpha seltzer. It only took five grams in order to actually dissolve the antacid. So it's less than what you need. They were very surprised at how much and how little of things it took. Okay, uh, there it is, Pepto-Bismol. The nasty pink stuff you drink. Oh. Okay, they say it's supposed to be good. No. Pepto-Bismol, neutral solution is a four, is a seven. Pepto only took it to a four. It's not a very effective antacid. If you get a tummy ache or heartburn, I would. Based on their data, I wouldn't take Pepto. Based on their data, I would probably take Tums. Because it only took 0.3 grams. Very little amount in order to neutralize their stomach acid. But this is using the technology, using hands-on activities. The kids learned a whole lot about this stuff. Here's some more of their numbers they found. They generated all these numbers. Okay. The, most, the most effective antacid was the Tums. Out of all the groups tested, nine groups said Tums was the most effective. The most cost effective was Rolex. Rolex was a better cost for their money. But Rolex was not effective at all. Zero Rolex were effective. So using their digital equipment, they discovered what's the most cost effective, what's the most effective. You can do that too. But we've got to embrace this technology, and that's what we're going to do. It's here to stay. We can't get rid of it, no matter how much we want to do in the classroom. But in conclusion, the incorporation of technology into the classroom will only advance our learning. We're starting off with a few digital probes, devices, but this can lead to more. The more of what we get, the better off we are. In the future, I'd like to see students design, develop, and implement their own labs. I'd like to see students develop their own labs. Any questions?